So Moment Factory, first of all, we're a creative multimedia studio from Montreal. Uh, we specialize in live entertainment, with bringing people together. This is why we say we do it in public. Uh, now, after 20 years, we have many different uh, uh, areas of activities. So we do theme parks, airports, public spaces, museums. But always, it's the we do it in public motto that is the common thread into everything we do. So we do not do home entertainment or one human with the screen, but we try to use all these innovation and technologies like what Epic is famous for right now is like and to bring to this like live location based entertainment where people connect together. So we kind of use the same technologies, but in a different way uh, to our perspective. And we're always going to say stay true to this core value uh, from our group. Well, the type of careers and professions at Moment Factory varies a lot. And I would say this is one thing particular is that under the same roof in the studio, we do our own production for content production, video production, like VFX, 3D uh, shooting with cameras, also interactive. So software development, either the front end and back end that we produce ourselves. Also, we have the scenography and technical department where we do the specification. Obviously, we're not building the projectors, but we do all the design. So under the same roof, having these core competencies makes Moment Factory very unique because we can like share these different point of views from different um, professions when we do a concept and a design. Augmenting reality has always been very important for Moment Factory. This is really what we're doing. But mixed reality for Moment Factory today is uh, using all the virtual reality new technologies in gaming and mixing it with the projection mapping and the real audiovisual effect and stories that we're bringing. So it's really the bridge between the virtual technologies and the real life technologies together is what we called mixed reality. So uh, it's very important and we're working on new innovation about uh, space recognition, people recognition, object recognition, so that we can like really have everybody being able to interact, leveraging all of this innovation that is happening uh, around the world, which like Epic Games is one of the leaders. And we're working together to bring this, this new innovation to the real world uh, with real people. I arrived at Moment Factory eight years ago. Um, before that, I was a creative developer. I was used to experiment with uh, web technologies. In the interactive team, we have some uh, software developers, some uh, interactive designers, and our mission is really to explore the interface into the physical world. Our first immersive project or immersive performance was for C2 Montreal and uh, it was a, a four-minute live performance with real-time content. We had the mesh in the front and the LED backdrop, and uh, the performer can interact in real-time with his content. Uh, it, I think it was our first step into the, the mixed reality. It was in uh, 2015. Our challenges are that we have a really complex canvas with LED screens, LED sound, immersive projection, mega high resolution content. And um, it's also a multidisciplinary team at Moment Factory because uh, we have a lot of people coming from different backgrounds who are used to use different tools. So we started to use game engines because it's a, a way to regroup content artists with uh, software developer so they can share competencies and assets, even the 3D models and uh, even the technical teams uh, shows an interest into this tool. Platforms such as Unreal Engine uh, change the way we plan our project because uh, with previous tools, we are able to build a full simulation environment earlier in the process. Like in design phase, we can uh, visualize all the features of our project, all the real-time pre-render content in the same environment. Using real-time tools for augmented live performances, 
uh, is really to save some uh, some render time. You, you don't need to compile and to wait hours before to see the result. You can sit down with the director and just make your adjustment live. One of the projects we did with uh, real-time tools is uh, Kento Augmented Artist. It's uh, a Japanese artist who wanted to be the first world augmented artist. And um, it, it was an innovation project and we did a lot of prototyping workshop with him. We have to bring him with us in the whole process. It was a really innovative project and uh, augmented performance because we had to track his 3D skeleton with a, a camera tracking system. We had to have his silhouette with a depth camera to have the occlusion and to be able to really recreate an environment around him. He, he wanted to be able to go inside and outside and to have a portable augmented broadcast system, so even more constrained than when we are doing a, a traditional uh, augmented broadcast. We did other augmented performances with a high-speed tracking system uh, to allow the performer to interact in real time with the content and with the space. The challenges to do a live broadcast show with Billie Eilish were, the, first of all, the, the short timeline of production, then the performance of the build. We had to sit our content artists who are doing some high quality content with our developers to help them to optimize the build. Because when you have some high res surfaces, you have to be uh, frame perfect so you, you really have to, to have uh, good performances and uh, to synchronize all the camera with the content. It's also to, to bring the real-time way of thinking to the director and to the creative director because you have to think your show differently. With augmented broadcast and real-time engine, the line between uh, physical world and virtual world is really blending in the same direction. There's been a handful of projects that uh, knocked on our door from collaborators who, who had crazy ideas or really wanted to push the boundaries of innovation and needed uh, some sort of our help to make it happen. Uh, when I think about Nine Inch Nails in 2008, Lights in the Sky, how to control all these devices on stage with movement, sound, when I think about Madonna Super Bowl on uh, creating this mapping on the field with 3D optical illusion effects, uh, going to Red Hot Chili Peppers, a thousand of these winch tubes going up and down, and we just created some sort of a patch to create the shapes that would, you know, move the tubes around, but will also like display the lights on the tube. Muse Drone Store was a very ambitious stage with drones flying all over the place. And um, there was, there was uh, this challenge of mapping real time on the drones, but also we had interactivity on the stage to follow the band members and create effects around them. And then the pandemic hit. So everything that was happening in real life got transferred to a screen. And one of the first thing we did is take all the knowledge and all the workshops, the labs that we've done in the past uh, for artists and we build this augmented live uh, tool. So part of this lab was to, how can we enhance the performance of everyone that's been you know, doing from their living room, their kitchen, their backyard. So we developed like remote tools uh, to enhance the performance. Adding all this technology really helped to enhance the performance, but really important for us was to, how are we gonna connect the artist with his fan and how we're gonna connect the fans to the artist. So we use a multitude of different platforms, perhaps like Twitch, in order to have the fans to interact with the performance and have the performer to interact with the fan. And then came our collaboration with Unreal to develop the new feature, the 4.26 DMX. So basically the idea was to bring our expertise, the live show design in the physical environment, and bring it into the digital environment, into Unreal. So stage design, special effects, lighting, everything controllable within the Unreal platform. One of the great opportunities that we had last year was the Billy XR performance. So following the tour, which only happened for three shows in Florida uh, in March, 
we, we went back to the drawing board, look at all the content we created for the show and see how we can adapt it for the 3D environment in the XR Studios. Most of the content was, was built for a screen, so we had to see how we're going to break down the, all the content and had the layers to fit in this 3D environment so that when, when we played it on the XR stage, you can see the foreground elements, the background element, and the extended elements. And for us, who have been designing for more than a decade uh, concerts in theaters or arenas, we always think about you know, the 3D space and how, how you're going to live this experience, how you're going to share it with your friends, how you're going to, to connect with the performance. And now this layer of having a feed for people at home is, is, a, is a challenge, it's going to be a challenge. And we're going to have to think about how how do we bring the emotion to them? How do we connect them with the performance? How we connect the performance to them? How we connect them amongst, amongst each other? So it's all questions that we're, 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 we're having right now. Uh, the future of entertainment, I would say, I could start with uh, what's happening right now with the pandemic, with everybody like stuck behind their laptop, uh, doing their human life through the screen. Um, I think it's expedited what was already happening in the entertainment industry, uh, but maybe uh, put in one year what should have come in five years, which is this blurred line between what's virtual and what's real for humanity. So all these like uh, new technologies for the entertainment are bringing us with like, I think the gaming industry is leading the pack right now for innovation. So more and more, we're gonna have a more gamified life, which is enhanced with virtual reality. And uh, we won't see the difference between what's real and what's not real.